Hi, and welcome to the video. In this session, we're going to go right back to basics. We're going to be looking at Teams assignments and how we can create a basic text assignment. So let's get over to Teams. So here I'm in Teams. I'm working in a Year 11 class today. And from our menu, we're going to choose Assignments. This will open up our Assignments homepage. If you are working in a new team, you will just see a blank page. There will be no headings or anything in this area. However, we've got some assignments that have been already created. We'll just very quickly run through the headings at the top of the page. So we start off with forthcoming. So these are all the live assignments. So as you can see, these are ranging from the 10th of October right the way through till uh, 16th of August next year. The Ready to Grade tab. These are assignments that have already been turned in by our students. So as you can see from this assignment, We've got one that's packed up waiting to be graded. Past due, these are all the late homeworks. As you can see, we've got 27 that are waiting still to be handed in from this Elizabeth the first homework here. Returned, these are all the completed homework. So once I've graded the homework for a class and it's all been returned back to the students, the assignment is deemed as complete and it then goes into this returned area here. And we also have a drafts area. So in here, these are assignments that are partially created by the teacher. They've not been assigned yet to our students, so we can pack them up in a draft where potentially we can go back and add further content to that assignment, so additional instructions or attachments to suit. However, I'm going to be working straight out of forthcoming today, and at the bottom of the page, we've got this Create button. So I click Create, and I get the option here of being able to create a new assignment, a new self-marking quiz, or from existing, where I can recycle assignments from other classes that I teach, or from a previous year's class. So we can actually save ourselves a little bit of time by using uh, existing assignments. However, for today, I'm going to choose New Assignment. So this now opens up our Assignments Creation page, and at the top, I need to put in a title. So it's given a title, and beneath that, I can then put in the instructions. I've now put my instructions in. However, one thing to note about the instructions area is that you've got loads and loads of space. So you can put in as many instructions as you like. There are some basic word tools that come with it. So I can use uh, bold italics, underline, for example. I've got a highlighter available to me. I can also change font color as well. And I can also use bullet points or bullet lists and uh, also numbered lists as well. I can put attachments into there and also I can insert images as well. So for this session, I'm not going to attach anything. I don't need to worry about that area. However, I do need to come over to the right and start to put in some settings. So I need to start off with the hand in date. So if I just come to the top here, I've got a drop down and I'm going to give my students uh, one week to do the work. The turn in time, 2100 hours. I want it in a little bit earlier, so I'm going to set that to 1700 hours. I do have some additional settings in here. I can click Edit Assignment Timeline, so I can just open that box here. I can do a number of things in this area. So from in here, I can schedule an assignment by sliding the button over. I can actually then set this assignment to be released sometime in the future. So for example, I could be teaching the lesson, and while I'm teaching the lesson, the assignment is being released to my students in the background. I'm going to keep that turned off for the time being. As I come down here, I can also change the due date and the due time. I can also put a hard close date on that. If I'm getting my students to work to a particular deadline, by default, the close date matches the due date. However, I can push the dates and times out a little bit. So I could give my students 24 hours grace. And once that close date is achieved, the students cannot then turn in that assignment and they've missed the close out date. However, I'm feeling generous today, so I'm going to keep that switched off. If I've made any changes in here, just need to click done and that will then make those changes stick. So the next line down is who's going to get the assignment. So by default, it's going to my history year 11 class. However, by selecting the drop down, I can push it out to other classes if I choose. I could push this out to my history year 10 class as well. If I change my mind, select the drop down and just uncheck the class. So now it's just going to my history year 11 class. By default in my settings, it's going to be going to all of my students within the class. And again, with the drop down here, 
I can set it to all current and potentially future students. So any student joining the class in the future will also get this assignment as a piece of work to do. I can also name individual students. So I may get a student who needs an assignment tailor made for them, so to speak, or they may just be racing ahead and just need a little bit of extra work here. So for example, I could direct this straight to Laura here and you can see it's just going to the one student. I can set back that to all students. So from here, we can also set up for groups of students where we can manually group students or we can get teams to randomly group students together. So we would stipulate how many students you want in a group and we can let teams sort that out for us. So at the moment, my assignment is going to go to my history year 11 class and it's going to be going to all of the students in there. The next heading down is to select a module. This is geared around classwork. So if you're using that, that area of teams uh, you can then potentially direct this assignment over into a classwork module i'm not going to do that in this session i'm just going to keep it within the team next i can allocate points i can just give it max out of 10 for example or if you use rubrics within your class i can now add a rubric at this point i can click add a rubric and create my own brand new rubric or I can upload rubrics if we're keeping a list of rubrics in a central area. I can then bring those in, just drag and drop the CSV files into assignments. Or in this case, I've got a whole host of rubrics that have been used before in the past. And I'm just going to select my history rubric here. Select next. And when I open up my rubric, I can add further text to it so it becomes fully editable. I can also change the weighting of the points. So at the moment, this is set up so that creativity is set to 80% of the marks and research and accuracy is set to 20. I want to evenly distribute the weight this time. It's going to be 50-50. So this is now how my points distribution is going to be. I can turn the points off if I wish and just manually mark it. However, I'm going to keep everything switched on for today. And all I'm going to do then is click attach. So that history rubric is now attached to this assignment. I can then add a tag. I've got some pre-made tags here already for knowledge check, reading, research skills. I can add a new tag just by clicking plus here. And with this, it could be the name of a topic. So it could be in this case, like Elizabeth the first could be a topic that we're studying, or it could be the name of a teacher. So if you're a job sharing, for example, you can put the name of that teacher in so we know who's assigned what homework there. I'm just going to add this tag of, of Elizabeth the first, because that's the topic that we are studying at the moment. To make the tag stick, once you've entered it, you need to hit the enter button. So that tag is now live. So just coming across the top of the page here, I've got a drop down so I can add it to my students calendar, the students in my calendar or the students in the team owners calendar. So if I select students only, that will then put a reminder into my students outlook calendars, reminding them of the fact they've got an assignment. It flags that up a few hours before the assignment is due. At the top here, I'm going to get the option of being able to post a notification. Whereabouts within Teams do I want this notification going to? So it goes into a channel. So I've got from general here right through to the reign of Edward I. And as you can see, if I hit the drop down here, I've got from general here right through to Edward I. I'm going to push this through into Elizabethan England because that's the topic that we're studying at the moment. So the announcement for this assignment when it goes live will then be displayed here in Elizabethan England. And then I can turn on or off late notifications. So if a student turns in this work after the 16th here, I will then get a little notification appear in Teams. So I'm going to keep that. I'm going to turn that on in this case. So I can now do three things. I can either discard the assignment altogether, delete the lot and start a game. Or I can click save as draft because I may want to add further instructions or put an attachment to it. And I've just done this while I've got a spare five minutes. So I can just keep building on this assignment until it's ready to be distributed. Or I can assign it. In this case, it's ready to go. So I'm going to push this out to my students, click assign, and that is now sent out. It will then go into the forthcoming area here. As you can see, we've just had a quick announcement come up. We'll look at that in just a second. It's now coming into the forthcoming area here. And for Monday the 16th, this is when it's due at 1700 hours. If I double click on the assignment, I can open it up. And as you can see, these are all the students in my class. And the status for all of this at the moment is not handed in because I haven't had a chance to look at it. If I come over to the right hand side of the page to the top, 
three dots. I can select edit the assignment. So I can go back in. If I've forgotten to do something with the assignment, like I need to add some further instructions, I can do that. And if I've made any changes, all I need to do then is select update. And that will then update that ready for our students to start to do the work. So let's go over to the Elizabethan England channel. Let's have a quick look at the announcement. So there's the announcement here. I can click view assignment. That will then take me straight back through into the teacher view that we looked at just a, a moment ago. Again, I can select back. Also, it will then be displayed in my assignments backpack here under forthcoming. So there's the Elizabeth first essay there. So I can then click on it. That will give me access to it. And again, I can just click back into Teams and that takes me back to the start. Let's go into the student view. Here we are in the student view. There's Susan up there. And as we can see within the Elizabethan England channel here, notification has now come through. So Susan can access the assignment from here or Susan can go into her assignments area here. This is all the list of assignments that Susan has got. So she's got some past due. Here's our forthcoming page. And also she's got a completed area here. So here's the Elizabeth the first essay here. So she can just click on the bar. That will open it up. Or she can come in from the assignments backpack on the rail on the left hand side here. So again, here's Elizabeth first essay. So a student has lots and lots of opportunity of being able to access their assignments within Teams. However, I'm just going to drop back into the team. I'm going to come into assignments and I'm going to select the piece of work that needs to be done. So from the student view, obviously she's got the, the title of the, of the essay, the due date and time. We've got the tag, which is Elizabeth the first here. Here's the instructions. There's a hundred points possible, but also there's the rubric available to Susan as well. So if she clicks on it, that will open up the rubric. Susan can't edit it at all. However, it does tell her what the points are, what the weighting is, and this is what she needs to do to achieve full marks. Just clicks close, that takes that to the start. What we've asked Susan to do is write an essay in a Word document. So all that Susan needs to do now is select new. In this case, click Word document. She needs to give that document a title. So she's put the title in and all she needs to do then is select done. So as you can see, the Word document has automatically attached itself to the assignment. So all Susan needs to do now is double click on it, open it up. This now will open up in the browser. So it's Word on the web, so to speak. And all she needs to do then is put her 500 words now onto the page. So Susan's put some words in and all she needs to do now is just click close. That will shut down the Word document and that will be saved directly into the assignment here. Susan can come back to this as many times as she likes. So she can just keep adding or removing up until the point when she wants to hand it in. All she needs to do now is once she's happy with the work, she can select hand in. A little animation will play. However, if Susan decided that she needed to add further content to her work, she can just select undo hand in. That will recall the work back. So as long as the work isn't being marked, the document can be updated. So all she's going to do now is she can reopen it up, add any further content, and then just hand it back in again. Once she's completed the work, all she needs to do is click back. That will then be removed from the forthcoming area here, and that will then go into the completed area because it's now deemed as finished. So there's the essay there. So Susan then can then just exit out, go back into a general channel, and then she's good to do any further work or just carry on as normal. So let's go back into the teacher view. So we're now back into the teacher view and we're back in assignments. So here's our Elizabeth the first essay, 16th of October. And if you just hover over the line, as you can see, just on the far right hand side, one of 27 students has now turned that work in. So I'm just click on the line anywhere that will open it up. As you can see for Susan here, the status is now set to handed in. So I can just click anywhere on that line that will open it up. So this opens up our speed grader area, starts off by automatically opening up the piece of work that Susan's submitted. I can select review from the top of the page if I wish. So I can add comments to the piece of work. I can come over to the far side here, select editing and go to reviewing where I can then annotate straight on to piece of work. So that comes out in a different color. 
So once I finish reviewing this or adding any comments, because I'm working in the browser, this is automatically saved. And then I can come over to the right hand side of the screen here to the speed grading area. And here's my history rubric. So I can click on that and that will open it up. So we've got the headings for creativity and research and accuracy. So for creativity, I'm going to give a three points. And as you can see by selecting that rubric, it automatically grades it at the top. I can give some informal feedback in there. I then need to grade the research element. And from that, again, I'm going to give it three points for that. And as you can see, by selecting that, that sets the score up to 75 out of 100. And again, there's a little bit of feedback on the side there. Once I've finished grading the rubric, just select done. That takes me back into the speed grader area. And in the feedback area, this is where I give the formal feedback. So this is what's actually going to be taken through to the grades tab within Teams. So that's the feedback entered. I can add an attachment. I can also make a short video as well of the feedback. And I can select new here and add additional Word documents, etc. Beneath that, there's the points total here, which is pulled through from the rubric area. And I've now got a choice of doing two things. I can return the work as completed just by clicking return here. Or if the work doesn't come up to scratch, in this case, Susan didn't really quite write enough words. So I could return that for revision where I can then send that work back to Susan so she can go back in, do a bit of remedial work on there, add further comments and then send that back to me. However, for this session, I'm happy with it. So I'm just going to hit return and that will then send that back to Susan. So now that's gone back to Susan as a graded piece of work. Using the speed grader, I can toggle through to the next student or I can use the drop down arrow here. Here's a list of students. I can then work my way through this list if everyone's handed that piece of work in. As it stands, I'm just going to close it. That takes me back to the beginning again. And I can select back and that takes me back to the grading area here. If I just drop into the assignment, as you can see, Susan's dropped off the list and that has now dropped into the returned area here. Despite the fact this assignment being handed back to Susan, Susan still has the opportunity, despite the fact it's graded, she can still go back in. She can still reopen the assignment and add if she wants to. And she can then resubmit that work back to me for grading for a second time if required. All the grades from our assignments then go through into the grades tab. And from the grades tab, we've got our list of all the assignments that's been set. And as we can see, here's our Elizabeth the First essay. There's Susan, and that's the score that she's achieved uh, for that piece of work. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to like. Also, please subscribe to our channel. If you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.